Well, greetings viewers and voyeurs with Got That Funk, and this is a video response of sorts to my friend Noplum99, who about 10 days ago, I think, uh, made a video called Aliens and Artificial Intelligence, and I can't remember the whole title, but that was the, uh, the basis of the video. And I've already uh, replied to Jim about artificial intelligence, you know, somewhat incoherently, I admit, but bottom line is... Uh, I know some of you watched it, and I'm glad you're watching this video because I've got a lot to say about aliens as well. You see, I'm a child of the uh, late 60s and early 70s, and as such, I grew up watching Star Trek. It was absolutely my favorite thing to watch when I was a kid, for sure. And I think probably, if I'm honest, it's got a lot to do with the fact that I was such a big fan of the show that I just took it for granted that uh, the cosmos is filled to the brim with uh, intelligent life. Whether or not we will ever communicate with this life is a completely different point, but it seems to me obvious that uh, no matter what the odds are against abiogenesis occurring on any given celestial body, those odds are more than covered in the cosmos. Even if there was only one planet per galaxy with intelligent life, that still means there's hundreds of billions of intelligent civilizations in the universe. So, uh, that being the case, I, I, I think even though we have no proof, I don't think it's unreasonable to presume that there's intelligent life someplace in outer space. Whether that uh, intelligent life has got any interest or desire or motivation, whatever word you want to call it, to come and visit our little blue dot is a completely different question. I mean, held against the transom of space, the Earth is utterly insignificant. Having said that, is it? Because this is a world where the conditions were ripe for abiogenesis to initiate life and for that process to continue for billions of years up until the point where we are now at, where there is intelligent life, where consciousness has arisen in a material universe. Um, and I probably assume that that would be a rare thing. I think life itself is pretty rare. Uh, abiogenesis requires very specific circumstances over a specific window of time. And uh, if any of those factors are missing or, or exceeded, uh, as far as we know, it wouldn't occur. And therefore, it's extremely unlikely to occur in the first place. But if it does occur, and life is a result, there's certainly no guarantee that a complex life will ever evolve uh, from simpler organisms, or even if it does, that it would therefore evolve into intelligent consciousness sentient life. And if there is such life out there in the cosmos, uh, overcoming the vastness of space is no small order. Uh, regardless of uh, concepts of warp drive or hyperspace like in Babylon 5 and other shows, um, the bottom line is, as far as we know, space and time are related. They are, they are part of the same phenomenon, and that being so, uh, traveling across space without disrupting your uh, relationship with time doesn't really seem possible, as far as we know from physics as we understand it now. I would be more open to the fact that there is a lot about physics that we don't understand. Um, but we can't know what that is until we know what that is, you know what I mean? So theories like hyperspace, for example, where there's uh, sort of like layers of space and you can go underneath one and burrow your way from one point to another point. Um, you know, that, that sounds all romantic and fanciful and everything like that, you know, in terms of uh, an interesting way of getting around the problem of traveling across space. Uh, but it's pure fantasy. We have no idea if such a thing exists, and even if we, even if we, even if we knew for a fact that it existed, we wouldn't necessarily know how to access it or navigate once it was accessed. And I think problems like that would be uh, there for any advanced alien civilization who uh, might want to come and do a bit of sightseeing around the universe. And that's just it. In in Jim's video, he mentioned about uh, you know why would aliens want to come to this planet in the first place? You know we are basically insignificant and people have said oh you know they'd come for the resources or they'd come to enslave us or eat us or whatever um, and those are good plots for sci-fi for sure um, I'm not gonna not gonna poo-poo them but at the end of the day 
it doesn't strike me that uh, even if you even if you took all the resources off this planet, that it could possibly justify the um, the, the time necessary and the, the the travel necessary to come and get it. it I, I can't imagine how how that would be uh, efficient on the part of the uh, aliens coming to raid us. So I agree with Jim. There's plenty of places in the, in, in the, our own solar system which have more water than here, for example. Um, so I'm sure there's an awful lot of mining you could do without necessarily trampling on civilizations in order to do it. I think if there was a reasonable uh, motivation for traveling to Earth, it would be us. It would be the fact that we have developed a rudimentary form of sentient conscious intelligence and that being so um, I think that's probably pretty rare I think life arising probably isn't necessarily rare once it arises I think uh, its continuance obviously would depend on a lot of factors not all of which are dependent on the planet on which they're arising you know solar flares can fuck everything up for example um, but anyway, I digress. The point is, if if life arises, it doesn't necessarily have to evolve to a point of intelligence. And where it does, I think that would be pretty rare. And therefore, because of its rarity, probably pretty interesting. And therefore, maybe worth exploring, studying, getting to understand. Now, that puts a value on knowledge, which itself is a pretty big presumption. Um, and, you know... There's a scene in Babylon 5 that, uh, that I'm reminded of right now, you know, Jakar picks up an ant on his glove and, and says, you know, and he puts it back down on a leaf and says to the woman he's talking to, he says, if that ant went to another ant and said, what was that? How would it respond? And that's how it is for us when it comes to life forms that are so much more advanced or ancient than we are. We are basically ants to them. We are no, we have no more chance of comprehending their level of intelligence than an ant has of comprehending ours. Uh, and I think the original series of Star Trek had similar themes to that as well. Sometimes the aliens were so far advanced that uh, even though we're out in space gallivanting across the galaxy, uh, that was still considered, you know, primitive by comparison. So unless they wanted to figure out something specific about us, humanity, or the early stages of uh, the development of intelligence, something like that, I can't see any real motivation for coming here at all. Um, and certainly not one that would justify the difficulty it takes to get here. So do I think aliens have ever traveled to the Earth or ever could or would? I seriously doubt it. Having said that, and I'm no fan of uh, the book Chariots of the Gods or anything like that, but it does strike me as a more plausible possible explanation for an awful lot of the mythology that we have on this planet, where people have pointed to the sky and said that they have encountered, you know, gods, beings with uh, extraordinary powers. Um, it strikes me as more likely, frankly, that... Uh, the explanation for that is either imagination, as the most likely explanation. Uh, second to that would be uh, some sort of real event which might involve travelers from another planet or another dimension. Both of those possibilities strike me as more likely than some ethereal, supernatural being uh, which decides to interact with us for a long, long time and then disappear forever after that. So yeah, um, that's my thoughts about aliens visiting the planet Earth. I seriously don't think that it's ever happened or is likely to happen. Um, the idea of interdimensional beings, uh, the idea that uh, you know there are overlapping realities and somehow the, uh, beings can open a door between their dimension and ours. You know, I, I love my sci-fi and I, and I certainly am not completely close-minded to that kind of thing, but it just doesn't strike me as very likely, I have to say it. Um, but the universe is a weird place. You know, 350 years ago, give or take, someone would have laughed at the idea that there was animals so small you couldn't see them. 
and then someone comes along and invents a microscope and oh my god there's a universe in a drop of water you know so never say never we don't know what we don't know but i think it's fair to make a couple of guesses and i'm quite happy to guess that there is intelligent life out there in the cosmos i'm quite happy to guess that uh, it's not outside the realms of possibility that we may one day communicate across space with intelligent life but i'm happy to guess that we will never actually have physical contact with intelligent life from another planet certainly not in my lifetime i want to thank you for watching this video and until next time may all your ups and downs be ups